this will mean that uh, there's no uh, purchasing of uh, mat raw materials again over and over. It means that they can use their own waste streams, which are upcycled. We create added value to this, and um, it will have an, uh, an impact also on the on the perceptions of the brand and the positioning of this brand. So. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Ecor, what is it? Well, Joe, Ecor is made with uh, only water, pressure, and heat. And we can convert almost any kind of cellulose fibers into a panel. And from that panel, you can make structures, you can, make, uh, you can bend it, you can laser cut it, you can print it, as you can see on the uh, panel behind you. So this is Ecor panels that we have behind us in the diff studio. We've had them here for yes. three weeks. Yes, yeah, so these are made of uh, old office paper, the ink the office paper. And to give you an example here on this uh, table which we made for uh, Ellen MacArthur, we did an R&D on converting uh, coffee grounds into, uh, uh, into a panel and with water pressure and heat we could here. And we've got a couple of samples like echo made out of wheat straw, echo made out of cotton uh, and so on and so on. So, the cellulose fibers we can take, the blends, the recipes we can make, those are essential. And the applications you can find in building and construction, signage and display, consumer products, whatever. So we're going to talk a bit more about the applications in a, in a couple of minutes, but just a bit more on, on, on the product. So cellulose fibers. Yes. Um, paper is one source of those that you mentioned, but, but where, are we, where are those coming from mostly? Yeah, well, we define them in uh, urban fibers, farm fibers, and forest fibers. Forest is uh, more obvious, it's like wood chips uh, from the uh, wood manufacturing industry. Farm fibers, you must think of almost any kind of uh, uh, crop after the harvesting. Yeah? So like corn, um, wheat straw, uh, whatever. Urban fibers, you can think of um, all newspaper, corrugated cardboard, jeans, um, the coffee grounds, which I was talking about. So it can vary a lot. And what we do is um, we uh, develop this technology uh, in over more than a decade. And um, after that, we uh, started with a pilot factory in order to see if it's also upscalable, as eh? is, is it got viable. Do we really recycle 99% of our water? Um, are we, uh, uh, what energy do we use? What are the effects of 24 seven versus five uh, days a week with eight hours? And um, when I was thinking on what is the route to market for this, uh, because the applications can be almost everywhere, um, we decided to uh, uh, develop a community of designers, which could be like an architect or a product developer or, um, uh, any kinds of uh, design and but what you also need is people who make this eh? who start putting bolts in it uh, laser cut it uh, print with it and with these communities we enable them to achieve their circular economy ambitions so, so you've got that's designers architects experimenting with this material yes. um, and and just to go back on that point about the what goes into it that's it sounds like that's stuff that would have been wasted otherwise. I mean, coffee grounds, um, we hear about a few uses for yeah. them, but there's not many people doing much for, with that, is for there? For me, cellulose is waste. This is just a material without a label or a certification. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, we need to go into a, in the R&D. Yeah? So it's about co-creation, taking co-responsibility, cooperation. And um, uh, from there on, you can uh, develop these recipes and these recipes where you need to facilitate also this collaboration. And that's why with uh, Van Houten, we established, we decided to go to an R&D facility in the Netherlands now. Okay. Yeah. And you've been working on it for a few years, you said, would you say 2002 or? The technology took us uh, 10 years to develop mm -hmm. because uh, the moment we said, um, it's about doing the right thing and it's only water pressure and heat, no additives, no glues, no whatsoever. Uh, that took uh, uh, the 90% of that time. 
And now, about two years ago, we started to commercialize this product and put it into uh, different projects, different applications into the market with governments, um, commercial uh, companies, and so on and so on. And why do you think now uh, people are getting interested in, in materials like this? Well, um, personally, I've been involved in Create Cradle product design and uh, commercializing Create Cradle products uh, for more than a decade. And I think uh, circular economy on itself also is about a behavioral change. And people know now, they want now, but the next step is that you need to go out and start doing it. Huh? And uh, I think technologies uh, like ours are the ones who will enable others to achieve their ambitions. Yeah. So it's the mom that it's momentum is right now. Well, that's uh, what I was going to say. Momentum yeah. from other companies is something that's maybe supporting the, the growth of uh, the, the scalability of, of Ecor. Yeah, the, the, the path of knowing what you can do, the, uh, uh, the, the part of wanting, the political will is uh, there. I can see in larger parts of the world where I work in. And um, I think that there is enough momentum now to really uh, make a meaningful difference together. And so we, we have this momentum, there's this, uh, there's this growing interest. Um, how would a business use it? We've seen panels, coffee table here, um, two, two possible examples are there. I mean, it, you made it sound like it's almost endless, the different applications of this product. Yes, and that's, the, that's immediately also the biggest threat, of course, because you can't label or put it in a box. But let me make it uh, uh, very obvious by some examples of projects we are working now on. So um, in April of this year, I met uh, Ricardo Weigand from Heineken, Mexico mm -hmm. at uh, the accelerator workshop of Ellen Mercata. And now in six months time, we, could gr we grew in a collaboration where we signed a three years collaborative research and development agreement. Uh, we defined four uh, projects with Heineken um, as a pilot project. And it's all about converting their beer industry waste streams, cellulose waste streams, into applications they can use uh, in their uh, materials. So think like uh, promotional activities, uh, packaging activities, and so on and so on. So we're in prototyping uh, with them, and uh, it's very exciting uh, so news. So Heineken Mexico, Mexico, you met them at, uh, at a CE100 acceleration yes. workshop. So um, for audience that don't know, um, Ecor, a member of this uh, of this network of businesses yes. working towards a circular economy. So you, you met Heineken, and that's a that's a pretty pretty big company. So they must be taking it seriously if they're if they're investing in this new technology. Yeah, well, but it's also good business and good sense. Um, it has got an uh, impact from an environmental perspective. But uh, to give an example, we are working on a, a promotional activity they use uh, in. Uh, thousands of uh, settlements where their products are sold. And um, it's like a sign, and that sign will be um, exchanged over time, and uh, there's a repetitive uh, material in it. Nowadays they use like a PVC former for this material. With uh, using their cellulose waste stream, we convert it into an acker panel. On that acker panel they can print it, and um, instead of using the PVC screen only once and then after a couple of weeks it is discarded, we now have got, to, we can take the reverse logistics, take this panel back, put it in our blind, uh, blender again, make a new panel of it, and then um, it'll be the uh, promotional activity for the, ne for the next cycle. Um, this will mean that uh, there's no uh, purchasing of uh, mat raw materials again over and over. It means that they can use their own waste streams, which are upcycled. We create added value to this, and um, it will have an, uh, an impact also on the on the perceptions of the brand and the positioning of this brand. So, there are so many examples um, uh, of uh, what we're working with and what we're introducing.